People do business for various reasons. If you do it for money, you will have a different perspective towards starting a business. And when you do it for passion, completely different story. Wine, motorbikes, and travel. I heard about two entrepreneurs who approached business like an adventure. An adventure where they've created a business and brand around their shared passions. For many people, building a business around something you are passionate about is not always so straightforward. So I was interested to learn more about their startup story and see what advice they had for those just starting out. Meet Vikram and Jessal, founders of Riding Wine Co., a natural wine bar and e-commerce store based in Ealing, West London. I got a chance to sit down with them and learn more about how they got started in the world of business. So our background has been, we both have been in corporate jobs for many years in technology, sales and marketing, uh, in various companies, various countries, and we always sort of dream to have a bar Okay. Like most um, people do. Like yeah, most people yeah, do. Yeah, bar or a restaurant, bar. basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to have a place of your own that you can call, you know, your place. When we got to know about natural wine during travel, we, used, we love traveling, and we saw certain natural wine bars across the world, and it just sort of called us. Mm -hmm. The moment we drank the wine, the moment we spoke to the people who were serving, it kind of just came into the head that this is something which we should do. Natural wines are a niche within the wine industry. What makes them different to other wines, including organic wines? Well, it all comes down to the way in which they are made. I'll let Jessal explain. So natural wine, as the word suggests, in all its forms, I want to say quote unquote natural. It's not a legal definition, but it's just the term that the industry uses. So it could, you will hear it being called either natural or low intervention. What it basically means is that the end to end winemaking process, which is the agriculture and the wine cellar, it's free of chemicals. It's free of any artificial additives. It's always hand harvested, not machine harvested. So there's no insecticides, there's no pesticides, there's no artificial fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Everything that's done is done using products that nature has provided. And then when the grapes are taken into the cellar as well, everything is done, again, I'm going to say in a natural way. So nothing is added to the wine, nothing is taken away from the wine uh, to make it taste a certain way. So it's very focused on being in harmony with nature. Because the process is very tedious and you need to put a lot of hard work in the vineyards so right. that they have to put less work in the cellar. It means they can't mass produce the wine. So most of the winemakers that we work with, for example, or even natural world, you will not see their wines in supermarkets uh, because you know it's uh, it's pretty much practically impossible to use these methods and make hundreds and thousands of bottles a year. It was these winemakers Vikram and Jassal needed to connect with to get started in their business. But with a longer winemaking process and the inability to mass produce meant that they had a bit of competition. When we spoke to the winemakers, we there is a big uh, wine fair that happens across the world. About all, all about natural winemakers and they were looking for importers and we, we said we want to come and visit your place and we would like to buy wine from you and we are coming on a motorbike. That, the moment we said that we saw a smile on their face because their importers go there but they go for business. Yeah, yeah. We were going carrying our passion with us yeah. and this is exactly what clicked between us and pretty much everybody said yes just let us know our plan and that's how it started. They planned out their route and got themselves ready for an adventure. One they called the Grape Escape. France, Italy, Croatia, Slovenia. From country to country, vineyard to vineyard, they went in search for natural wines, all while riding in style on the back of their Triumph Bonneville T120. Because these kind of things, you will either never do it or you just do it. So why just not do it? Once they've chosen the perfect wines for their business, they headed back to London, ready to embark on the next phase of their business journey. Now it was all about creating the perfect wine bar for their ideal customer. Our personality, yeah. yeah. The bar, we wanted to bring our whole journey inside. We wanted to make it a friendly, very comfortable place. 
I mean, we've had instances where we've done events and people have sat at the same table and later they've become really good friends and gone to like barbecues and stuff <laughs> like yeah. that. Bikers are commonly associated with beer. Wine is doesn't have that sort of an image, but we were like, you know what, we want to do it. We want to make our place slightly rugged because natural wine is something like that. It's not refined, it's not filtered, it's the pure nature in a bottle. If you look at our bottles, all of them have the prices written on the bottles because I always thought that turning a tag and looking at the price is a very obvious thing that people do and it does it does make people uncomfortable. It makes people feel like they're choosing on the price and that's not the impression that they want to give. So, you know, they can comfortably look at the price without actually turning a tag. Not everybody knows about wines. There's nothing wrong about it. So this is a place where you come and meet your friends or family and have a good wine and a good chat and don't have to worry about whether you know about wines or not. Despite following their passion and building a business around something they love, starting a business didn't come without its challenges. Opening a, a wine bar, uh, which is a niche already, yeah. and then on top of that bringing natural wines, which is even niche within that niche market, is very challenging. What would people think of? Uh, would they pay these kind of prices? Would they like the wines? Would they think that, oh, I thought wines were natural already? Mm -hmm. It's just different. It's different from what people are used to. So it's about accepting that difference and being willing to actually pay for that difference. That education will take us a lot of time. So we solve that by doing wine tasting events, nice. um, promoting on Instagram, t talking about the wines. For example, orange wine, not many people know about it. Uh, we always give them a taste before they, they have a glass or a bottle. But in March 2020, only a year after opening, Riding Wine Co, like many other small businesses, found itself adapting to the coronavirus pandemic. We were just starting to build up the business and get ourselves known in the local area. Um, and obviously then COVID came along, um, which forced us to literally think on our feet. It was, mm -hmm. it was like a big jolt because we were kind of going on the upward. Um, I mean, we knew that e-commerce is one of the answers, uh, but we didn't have any system set up. It was something that was in the plan, but because we were so caught up with operationally running the business, we hadn't actually managed to do it. So we decided to actually close for a couple of weeks, take a step back, and um, we actually used that time to set up a whole e-commerce website. We actually took picture of almost 200 well, yeah, over 200 bo bottles. We bottles. catalogued it in a couple of weeks. D description, vintage, yeah. year, who's made it, what is the price? In a typical scenario, I would be like, oh, two weeks isn't enough to set up an e-commerce platform. <laughs> <laughs> at least with 200 wines, at least I'm going to need X number of weeks. And yeah. suddenly, because there's so much at stake, I found a way to make it happen. And um, that's what I think that's what most people with businesses do. They find a way. So, you know, when, uh, I mean, I'm sure everyone relates to this, you know, when at work, you go to your manager with a problem and they say don't tell me a problem tell me a solution and you think oh that's corporate <laughs> but literally now it's like you kind of go like i don't want to hear the problem i yeah. want the solution yeah, yeah. plus we also diversified a bit from our product line so our core product is natural wines then we also started getting some uh, craft beer from local breweries nice because um, that was a time where we wanted to help each other, everyone should help each other. I mean, we were buying the beer from one brewery already, but then we started sort of opened up that this is a time when local businesses need to support each other. What do you enjoy most about what you guys do? It's the whole social aspect for me, that's that's been brilliant. And I think that's what, for me, it keeps me going as well. Like, you know, when, when it's like a bad day or something, the vibe that we built up is that of friendships. It's a community. It's not, we are not co colleagues. We are not customer or, pay, you know, that kind of relationship. Now we have so many customers who just know us as Vikram or Jason. I think personally, the amount of friends I've made yeah. in this one year is much more than what I've made in the last 17 years of my corporate life. People do business for various reasons. Some people do business to make money. Some people do it because it's their passion. They believe in an idea or a philosophy or anything. If you do it for money, you will have a different perspective towards starting a business, right? You may involve fun, you may not involve fun. You will be very more serious about where I can make money. And when you do it for passion, completely different ball story. Then you do things that you really want to do. Life can change in a second. There is no tomorrow. Uh, if, you are, if you have a passion, if you have a gut feel that you want to do and you'll do it, you should just go for it. Life will carry on, life will go on. 
So if you have an idea, if you have a passion, just go, just go for it. I set up In Pursuit Daily to explore what people do and why. We profile inspirational people who have pursued their own version of success. So if you have something that you really want to pursue, then hit the subscribe button and notification bell and join our community to stay updated on our future videos.